Hey everyone, it's Ben Hardy here, and in today's video, we're going to be going over a 2022 Land Rover Range Rover full size long wheelbase with the SV Autobiography package. First and foremost, so a huge shout out and thank you to the Land Rover here in downtown Salt Lake for giving me some time with this full size. Check out the inventory in the description down below. Let's get into the video. Let's take a look at the last generation of the Land Rover Range Rover full-size autobiography. Now, I've actually been saving this footage for quite some time because I wanted to wait until I had a chance to review the new Range Rover with the inline six and with the V8 and see at least an autobiography before I kind of released this video talking about the previous version because I want this to be a video to kind of help you guys out with deciding if you should go for the new version. So first off, stylistically with both of the vehicles, I think they both look good from a front end perspective. And you guys can see here with the key fob, I got the cool light feature. The one thing that I will say though about the previous generation is it doesn't have that same like flush look on the front end as the new one has. And so everything kind of just pops a little bit more. And so I think that's gonna come down to personal preference in terms of what you like the look of more from a front end perspective. Do you like how everything pops out on this or do you like the new one where everything's a little bit more flush with the bodywork itself? Now, popping to the side, I guess the thing with the new one is you can get 23 inch wheels. So if, if you want massive wheels from the factory, you can get that, whereas with this version at yeah, 22s. But look at that Brembo brakes, which is always important. And then air suspension, right? That standard equipment. That just makes sense what you're gonna get on a uh, fully loaded Range Rover. And also this is another big thing is that accent piece on the side, again, it's all flush with the bodywork in the new one. So it, it doesn't like, I, I, the best way for me to describe it is it doesn't like hold as much of a role in terms of the overall design. Like it's still there, but it again, doesn't pop out. Same with the door handles, because the new one has like those flush door handles like the Velar. And so uh, that's kind of the big theme with the uh, new one versus the old one is everything's flush on the new one versus the old one where everything is, well, not flush. And then with the back end, we've got the power uh, tailgate. Now this pretty much operates the same with both of them. And Again, it's just kind of like a hallmark of Range Rovers where you've got that double tailgate where you can like sit on it and it's got really nice carpeting, which uh, yeah, looks fantastic. And you guys can see what the color of the cargo covering and notice it even has stitching on the cargo cover. I still to this day, I'm like shocked that they would do that because it's a cargo cover. And you got obviously the pillows and everything that come with the fully loaded Range Rover. So you can see like tons of luxury features come with the SV autobiography, like everything. And look at the floor mats. Like they are so ridiculously plush. <laughs> <laughs> complete overkill but hey that's what that's that's what you get when you get a real luxury car like this and then you got buttons to like fold down the seats and also for the air suspension as well so obviously these buttons don't look as like pretty as the buttons on the new one where they kind of have like more of just a stylized finish but i mean buttons a button they work they, they do what they need to do i know some of the comment section below is gonna be like well they work until they don't because it's a range rover and hey funny but finishing things up with the rest of the rear, this is another area where I've been kind of conflicted because especially the taillights, the new one has those taillights that are kind of hidden until they're on. And this one, they're very prominent. And I still don't know which one I like the look of more from a rear end perspective. I want you guys to let me know what you think. Um, again, the new one has a cool, sleek, modern look, but this just looks like, it just looks good. And again, I've seen them like next to each other and yes, this does, doesn't look as like modern as the new one when you see them next to each other, but still, yeah, it just looks good. And then from an interior perspective, this is another thing that's kind of interesting. So like this interior does not feel outdated whatsoever. Again, the new one feels a little bit newer, a little bit flashier, but this interior still like looks absolutely fantastic. Fit and finish with materials is fantastic as well. And then you have tons of features, like look at all those seat adjustments you have. And then, again, you gotta remember, this is for the back passengers and they have like memory, power adjustable, massaging seats, like <laughs> literally everything. Like you, you couldn't ask for more. And like the entire door panel is all covered in leather. It's super luxurious. And then you can see here with the pillowy headrests that you can adjust around your neck. And this is another thing is with these seats, I think they look so cool. Again, the new one's kind of gone for like minimalist, uh, including like the seat design itself. And so again, it sells like a lot of, cool like luxury features but they've, they've definitely toned things down 
quite a bit. And then of course you got the cooler in the back. So again, there's a lot of features that you guys will see in this that are carry over to the new one. And that's kind of what I noticed is it, it seems like the new one um, doesn't necessarily add a lot from a feature perspective that the old one, ha like the old one already has all the same features. It's just they kind of change the look on a lot of things to just make it feel a little bit more modern. But I wouldn't necessarily say that it feels more upscale per se. And this is the one downside about power adjustments on everything is the speed at which, like you guys can see with that footrest, like it's pretty dang slow. And so, yeah, I'm, I'm sure like when you're in the backseat, you don't care, but you know, if you're just like trying to quickly like get in or something like that, and that happens to be up, it's like, that's, that's kind of frustrating because it's in the way, but tons of room, like tons and tons of room. I just thought these tables are so interesting. Uh, the one thing that I will say that's kind of nerve wracking about these, uh, it, maybe this is just because like it's, to me it's such an inexpensive vehicle, is like, I always feel like nervous touching everything in the vehicle, like putting it like back in its place or anything. Like I've, I'm, I'm always like scared I'm gonna accidentally break something. And so that, that's, I think it's maybe one of the reasons why I personally don't own like a luxury car like this. But I, again, they, the utility's there and everything seems to be really well built. It's just like, it, you know, cause it's such an expensive vehicle. It's like nerve, it's always nerve wracking. And uh, one thing I will say though, is you have to use two hands for a lot of the different uh, functions there in the back um, to control some of the stuff like those little tables. You pretty much have to use two hands to put it back. You couldn't just do it with one hand. And yeah, the door closing thing is pretty fun where you can just press a button and close the door. It's impressive because like the doors on the Range Rovers are very heavy. They're not, they're not light doors whatsoever. And then the other thing, leather headliner, like this is the most like opulent thing I've ever seen in a car from a headliner perspective because it's like, you know, cloth inexpensive, suede, yeah, a little bit more expensive but not that much, but leather, like doing full stitched leather for the headliner, it's like, okay, you are like, money's not, money's not a problem at that point. And then you can see with the front door panel again, fantastic from material standpoint. And Again, I, I think this design looks, like I said, let me know if you guys think this looks outdated because I, I think this looks so similar to the new one with a lot of the different controls. Like, again, some of the buttons are a little bit nice in the new one, but like, yeah, I don't know. I, I think that for a lot of people, I think it's ultimately going to come down to like a status thing. Like you're going to get the new one, not because it's like, like it is better in some ways, especially from a driving perspective. And I guess I can comment on that quickly before we pop in here to the front is, yeah, the new one does drive a little bit smoother. It is a little bit quieter, especially with the engine. So there are those benefits, but I think a lot of it's just going to come down to like, you know, flashing that you got the new $240,000 Range Rover SV autobiography instead of the peasant $220,000 old body style SV <laughs> autobiography, right? Uh, steering wheel also top notch from a material standpoint. Like, we've got a little leather around the airbag cover, and then you got the buttons that control multiple functions, paddle shifters on the back. And again, those paddles are paired to a 5 liter V8 with an 8 speed automatic transmission, supercharged. The new one has that BMW engine, which I'm, I'm a big fan of the BMW engine, but the thing about the BMW engine is it's, uh, you know, some people don't think it's as reliable as the 5.0 V8, and so you definitely have that side of things to consider. But I also don't think that reliability is like a huge concern for people purchasing this because, again, they've got the money to afford the repairs. But then on top of that, it also like there's a lot of leases with these, and people just don't really keep these long term because, again, it's like you got to get the new one because it's like the iPhone or it's a status thing. So, anyways, camera system fantastic with all Range Rovers, including this. Um, version of the full size and so that that was a benefit about this like version of the full size is it's like it had like all of the modern technology you can get in a Range Rover but then it still had some of the charm because again it hadn't been redesigned in quite some time it still had some of the charm of like older Range Rovers so it's like you get the modern tech mixed with some of that kind of like old school charm and styling frankly so it, it kind of had the best of both worlds Infotainment system responds amazingly well overall. I like how you have the shortcut bar so it's like easy to access different tabs. And I guess the other thing that's interesting about the infotainment system is the fact that it's like a little pop-out screen where like when the car's off, it'll like kind of recede into the dash a little bit. And it's just crazy, all the little features you get with this. And then of course we got the climate control that you can also use to adjust the seats and just like cool with the, all the different controls there. 
And of course, you know, heated cooled seats for the front massaging function as well. I mean, that's like kind of expected at this price point, right? And again, it's the top of the line Range Rover, so it's what you're gonna get. And I also like with the drive modes, how you've got like two different ways to select the drive modes. So like there's a little dial and the dial's kind of like not super responsive because it takes a second to go in the drive modes. Whereas you can also just click on the screen and it'll instantly just go into that program drive mode, whatever you want to call it. Range Rover calls it program, I call it drive mode. So um, the dial kind of like lets you access a lot of it, but then it's like, I just use the screen for everything else. And then you got like your analog control for the volume and then dial shifter, which yeah, Range Rover went away from because Jeep decided to copy them on everything. And so they're like, you know what? We got to differentiate ourselves from Jeep because they copied us. And then notice you've got your control for like the air suspension, the drive mode, select hill descent, control, low range. Again, it's still Range Rover, so it sells the off-road stuff. And then your parking brake. And then, of course, we have the refrigerator center console, which is, again, another big Range Rover feature. And, of course, we've got the armrests that are completely unnecessary because you have a center console you can rest your arm on, but it's, again, a Range Rover thing. And I always thought the double glove box is interesting. It's just... It's very interesting. And then leather on the dash there, again, really nice with the fit and finish. And then the bottom glove box, also normal. Not, a, not cool like the top one that you have to like hold open. And we kind of talked about this earlier, but um, well, first off, you got the controls there for the panoramic sunroof, which lets in a ton of light. And then again, leather headliner. That's just like that little bit of suede there. But yeah, just, it looks really cool it's, it's unique that is for sure I, i'm interested to see how that would hold up over time i feel like it would hold up really well because leather generally you know it, it's pretty dang durable but here's the original window sticker for this and again they did um for the first part of 22 they they had the old body style and this one was long wheelbase so again like the full luxury bad boy with every single option notice the base price there two hundred fifteen thousand two hundred dollars and then the fuel economy not great, but again, if you can afford the car, you can afford the gas. $223,540. I think with a new body style, you have to spend like $240,000 to get a similarly equipped vehicle. So a bit more money, but let me know which one you guys would choose.